So here we are, Democracy Monument. Let's go and have a close look. So here at the Democracy Monument, as you can say, it's a very, very, very busy road. Uh, I want to try and have a go at getting into the middle there so I can have a closer look at everything. But I think getting there is going to be like a, like a game of Frogger or the new game Crossy Road. So I'm going to watch the traffic a little bit. I, uh, I come from Australia, so I'm, I'm used to, uh, before entering the surf, watching the waves watching the currents. So I'm going to observe for a minute, then I'm going to go across. Wish me luck. Actually, you know, it's pretty easy to cross. But the, the, the key is just watch first. Watch the uh, ebbs and flows of the traffic. It may help that it's kind of in the morning now, uh, not peak hour traffic, but I've made it. I'm gonna have a closer inspection of the Democracy Monument now. So something common you'll see uh, in certain Buddhist and uh, Hindu influence places, uh, the Nagas. So, We've got a kind of a naga here. There's two nagas, one on this column and one over here on this column. They actually look a bit more like a like a serpent than a naga, but they, according to what I've read, these are actually nagas. There's four impressive wing-like structures that are guarding the uh, centerpiece here. And the four wing-like structures are surrounding represent, represent the four branches of uh, the armed forces. So we have the police, we have the military, we have the air force, and we have the navy. Now coincidentally, well actually not coincidentally, this is by clever design, that each structure is 24 meters high. Now the reason that they are 24 meters high is because the coup actually happened on the 24th of June. Now also by design, this is a circular structure and the radius is 24 meters across as well. Having spent a lot of time in China and Vietnam, I can't help but notice the, uh, the propaganda kind of nature of these, these uh, sculptures on the side, which are at the base of these wing-like structures. So the centerpiece of this impressive monument, you'll see on top there's a, a manuscript like a palm leaf's manuscript which is actually to represent the constitution that was drawn up in 1932 and that it's on top of two gold offering bowls the kind of bowls that you'd see in a temple now when it was first designed there was actually 75 cannons miniature cannons placed around the site and that was to re uh, represented that the uh, the year of was was 2475 and 75 that's the buddhist calendar so that's when the constitution was was created so at the base of the centerpiece you'll see six gates six gateways now these six gateways represent let me just check here the six gates of the turret represent the six proclaimed policies of the Pibun regime, which were independence, internal peace, equality, freedom, economy, and education. So 
So in 1932, there was a coup, but uh, unlike the images here, it was it was a bloodless coup, and it occurred when the king was actually on holidays. And soon after that, a constitution was drawn up, and that's what represented in the centerpiece there, the manuscript that's on top. That was the the first constitution of Thailand. So the so the years following the coup. Uh, despite having a democracy monument here, it was actually looked, resembled much more of a military dictatorship and wasn't really much like a democracy at all. Now, one thing that is noticeably absent from all of the different monuments I've seen around Thailand, uh, there's no representation here of the monarchy. There's no royal uh, imagery at all, which is quite quite unusual. This is, a, this is solely a monument which is for the military and the 1932 Constitution. Now, coincidentally, despite the origin stories of the coup and the Constitution and the military, uh, this location has actually taken on a whole new meaning and it's been the site of a lot of protests right up until currently. So most notably were the protests in 1973, the student protests, uh, which ended, resulted in a lot of bloodshed, and 1976 also. Now I've just looked up Google Maps and there's two memorials for these massacres or these uh, unfortunate events where uh, it seems that university students lost their life and, and uh, I'm going to go and check them out because I want to know a little bit more about what happened in 1973 and what happened in 1976 in Thai history. This was also one of the key locations for 19, uh, in, in 2013 and 2014. This site here was also one of the key protest places. Uh, when uh, Prime Minister Yinluck was going through some troubles and was outed as, eventually outed as uh, Prime Minister. Barricades at the ready for the next protest, I guess. Very popular site for the protests. You can see the uh, a lot of homeless outside the Mercedes-Benz dealership, which is a very good uh, indicator of Thai society sometimes. You've got the both extremes of society here living in close proximity to each other. 